Good morning. Today is the 31st, last day of May. Tomorrow is June. Tomorrow is June. Oh, this year's gone by so fast. I mean, I know it's only half over, but I mean, it's half over. Okay, May 31st. The people of Israel have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Ezra chapter 9 verses 1 through 2. Marriage is so much more than a civil right, so much more significant than a legal ceremony, so vastly superior to a social arrangement. Marriage was instituted by God in the Garden of Eden. He intended for the union between Adam and Eve to last forever. Marriage outside of the covenant does not produce the same level and depth of commitment that marriage within the covenant provides, nor does it give the eternal perspective necessary when challenges, traumas, and tragedies in life arise. Marriage in the house of the Lord, bound for time and all eternity, is God's way of perpetuating the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is his way of bringing greater light into a darkened world. <coughs> well, there you go. All right. Today is Judges chapter 4. And in this, um, the first verse says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord again. Um, so, but a prophetess arises, Deborah, or Deborah. I like to say Deborah sometimes, but anyways, Deborah, she rises up. She's the one who's judging Israel at this time, and she calls some people together, two tribes, 10,000 men, 10,000 chariots, something like that, to go up against somebody. There's a lot of names in this chapter that I kind of gloss over because I don't want to take the time to pronounce them in my head, but anyways... They go to war against somebody. And then this woman, I don't think it was, uh, this man, Sisera, fled to the tent of Jaleel, Jaleel, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, and the wife murdered him in his sleep. She drove a tent stake through the temple of his head. Um, and then... Israel prospered against these people they were fighting. It was kind of a weird chapter, but that's what's happening. Um, so let's talk about, there's a few things. Let's talk about uh, beacons of light. During this period of time, the Lord raised up a sequence of wise leaders, judges, to maintain some sense of godly order among the tribes of Israel. He also sent angels and prophets from time to time to stir the Israelites, Israelites up to a sense of their commitments and to remind them of the marvelous blessings that were part of their heritage. For the most part, the judges worked righteousness and brought about progress in the quality of life. Deborah stands out as an example, a beacon of light, friendship and courage in a sometimes confusing and, and unstable historical terrain and reflects the strength and power of divine leadership. Deborah, meaning a bee, was a celebrated leader who served as judge over Israel and unified the people in strength to defeat their enemies. She commissioned Barak, the son of Abinoam, to wage battle against the encroaching Canaanites under the command of Sisera. Barak agreed to gather the forces and attack, provided Deborah would consent to accompany him. That she did. Uh, that day the Canaanites, with their much larger force, were annihilated along with their king, whose name was Jabin. Thereafter, Deborah and Barak joined in singing a glorious anthem of praise to the Lord. The essence of Deborah's service is summarized thus. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might, and the land hath rest forty years. 
And then it talks about uh, Sisera and Jael. But, I mean, uh, I mean, she, she just killed him. He obviously ran away from something, and she killed him. And that's kind of, that's kind of it. But, as always, what can we take away from this? What can we apply into our own lives? One, that a woman can be a prophet, a prophetess, a leader, a commander of the tribes when everybody else fails. And two, don't run away. Never run away from responsibility. All right, May 31st, we've got two today. We've got Thomas Ken, Bishop of Bath and Wales, 17th century, and then again, Bishop Thomas Ken. So these are both of his. To God the Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved, to God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, to God the Holy Ghost, who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts, be all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Blessing and honor and thanksgiving and praise more than we can utter, more than we can conceive to be unto thee, O holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, by all angels, all men, all creatures, forever and ever. Some of these... I mean, we don't really align our beliefs with some of these, but um, the sentiments are quite beautiful sometimes. Okay, that was Judges chapter 4, and tomorrow is chapter 6. All right, see you then.